Hello, everybody. We're going to start off today by talking about terms. Not terms as in vocabulary words, but terms is the vocabulary word. Terms and expressions are things that are separated by pluses and minuses. If we had, for instance, 2x squared plus 3y minus 4, this would have three terms, 2x squared, 3y, and minus 4. The reason that this term would be minus 4 is because, as we remember, subtracting is adding the opposite. So really, terms are separated by addition, whether or not we can see the plus sign. Terms are mixes of numbers, variables, and exponents. Sometimes we don't see an exponent. Sometimes we don't see a variable. The number in front of a term is called the numerical coefficient, or just the coefficient. So the coefficient of 3x would be 3, just because it's the number before the variable. Sometimes it gets a little more complicated. The term y cubed over 5 would be the same as 1 fifth y cubed. And therefore, the coefficient would be one fifth. Why is it the same as one fifth y cubed? Well, if we had one fifth times y cubed, that would be one fifth times y cubed over one, which gives us our y cubed over five. So one fifth would be the coefficient here. The term 0.7ab cubed c to the fifth would have the coefficient 0 0.7, just the number in front of the variables. The coefficient of z, now we don't see a number here. But z is the same as 1z, 1 times z, so the coefficient would be 1. Similarly, if we had the term negative y, that would be the same as negative 1y, so we'd have a coefficient of negative 1. So when we don't see a number in front, the coefficient is 1. When we just have a negative in front, the coefficient is negative one. And what if we just had the term negative five? Well, we can imagine that we have some variable here that we can't see. So the coefficient is just negative five itself. You try a few. Find me the coefficients of these. So here's five for you to try. Go ahead and pause, unpause when you're done. Okay. The coefficient of negative 3y would be negative 3. The coefficient of 22z to the fourth would be 22. The coefficient of y would be 1. The 
coefficient of negative x would be negative 1. And the coefficient of x over 7, since x over 7 would be 1 seventh x, the coefficient is just 1 seventh. Now, terms with the same variables raised to the same powers, so the exact same variables raised to the exact same powers, are called like terms. If we have terms that are not like terms, they would be called unlike terms. Pretty simple. Like terms are the same variables raised to the same powers. Unlike terms do not have the same variables raised to the same powers. So 2x and 3x squared would be unlike. They both have x, but this one is an x to the first power. This is an x squared. So they are unlike terms. How about this one? 4x squared y, x squared y, and negative 2x squared y. Each of these has x squared y. So these are like terms. In this one, we have negative 2yz and negative 3zy. Now, at first, you might say yz isn't the same as zy. These are unlike terms. But this one's trying to trick you. Remember, by our properties, by the commutative property of multiplication, yz is the same as zy. We can multiply in any order. So this is the same variables raised to the same powers. The order didn't matter. These are actually like terms. Negative x to the fourth and x to the fourth, same variables, same powers. like terms. Okay, a couple for you to try. 3x squared y cubed, negative 7x cubed y squared, And then x cubed y to the fifth, y to the fifth x cubed. Go ahead and try these. You may already be done. If not, give it a pause. 3x squared y cubed, negative 7x cubed y squared. We have the same variables, but they are not raised to the same powers. x squared and x cubed are different. y cubed and y squared are different. These are unlike terms. And in this one, we do have the same variables to the same power, x cubed, y to the fifth. It doesn't matter that the order is not the same. They are still like terms. 
So why is it important that we can determine which terms are like terms and which terms are unlike terms? ahead of myself there. It's because we can do something called combine like terms. And this is the distributive property working in reverse. If we have 7x minus 3x, that's the same as x times 7 minus 3, which would be the same as 7 minus 3 times x, which gives us 4x. Now, the way I like to think of this is just x is as some random same object. And if we have 7 of them minus 3 of them, that gives us 4 of them. So we don't have to think about the distributive property every time. Let's say the x's were apples. Seven apples minus three apples is four apples. So let's do some work combining like terms. Ten y squared plus y squared. They're like terms, same variables raised to the same powers. And if we have 10 of them, plus one of them, that gives us 11 of them. Maybe y's are oranges, y squareds are oranges. 10 oranges plus one orange is 11 oranges. Now here, not everything is a like term. We have 8x squared, we have 2x, we have minus 3x. We can combine these. We can't do anything with the x squared. We don't have any other x squareds to play with. So that 8x squared is gonna stay 8x squared. But then here we would think we have Positive two of them, minus three of them. Positive two minus three is negative one. So we would have negative one of them, just minus x. Why wouldn't we write minus one x? Well, anything times one is itself. So the one disappears. 1 times x is just x. We can simplify that. So when we combine these like terms, we end up with 8x squared minus x. Nine n squared minus five n squared plus n squared. These are all like terms. They're all n squareds. So we can combine all of them together. Start with the first two. Nine of them minus five of them is four of them. And then four of them plus one of them is five of them. 5n squared. And negative 3y plus 3y 
plus 11y. We have negative three of them. We're adding 11 of them. Negative three plus 11 is positive eight. So we have positive eight of them, eight y. Let's look at some more complicated expressions. Simplify by combining like terms where we can. Two X plus three X plus five plus two. Well, two X and three X are like terms. And positive five, positive two, those are like terms. Combine the like terms together. Two X plus three X, two of them plus three of them is five of them. And then positive five plus two gives us positive seven. That's what we get when we combine these. So just so we can see it without the underlines, the answer here would be 5x plus 7. Negative 5a minus 3 plus a plus 2. Well, we have a terms here. And we have numerical terms here. If you want, you can write the like, like terms together. Just be sure that the sign in front of the term travels with the term. You can rewrite this as negative 5a plus a minus 3 plus 2. And then your a's are together and your numbers are together. Negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4, so negative 4a. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. Negative 4a minus 1 is what we get when we combine our like terms here. Four y minus three y squared. What can we do here? Well, the answer is nothing. They aren't like terms. We cannot combine them. We cannot simplify this any further. The next two are a little tricky because they involve decimals and fractions. Feel free to give these a try ahead of me. What we're doing doesn't change. Combine the like terms. Two point three X plus five X minus six. Well, these two are like terms. The minus six does not have any like terms to go with. So we cannot do anything with the minus six. But 2.3x's plus 5x's gives us 7.3x's. 
and then we carry along our minus six. Again, this wouldn't be 1.3x or 1.3. We cannot combine terms that have the variables with terms that do not have the variables or terms with one variable with terms of another variable. They have to be like terms in order for us to combine. I said this one might be a little tricky, but give it a try. Negative one half B plus B. Well, off on the side, I'll make a little math. We have minus one half of them plus one of them. We need a common denominator, negative one half plus two over two. And negative one plus two is positive one. So we end up with one half B. Now, sometimes before we can combine like terms, we've got to get rid of parentheses. Step one in simplifying is always eliminate all the parentheses. And very rarely can you just erase them. So we use the distributive property to get rid of parentheses. Now, if we had a plus sign right up against parentheses, no number in between, we can imagine that as a positive 1. And when we distribute that positive one, nothing changes, but the parentheses go away. So this is the only instance where getting rid of parentheses is just erasing them. And that instance is when the plus sign is right up against the parentheses, nothing in between. Is it the same for a minus sign? Absolutely not. If we have a minus sign right up against parentheses, that's a negative one. And when we distribute that negative one, it actually changes all of the signs. So it's minus 3a minus 2. It wouldn't be minus 3a plus 2. You can't just get rid of the parentheses when you have a minus sign there. And it doesn't matter if it's a minus straight up against the parentheses or if it's a minus 2 with the parentheses or a minus 4 with the parentheses. Always be careful. A minus before parentheses when you distribute is going to change your signs. Okay, let's do some practice with the distributive property. Some of these, when we're done distributing, we will need to combine like terms if they exist. So here we have five times the quantity 3x plus 2. We distribute the 5. 5 times 3x, positive 5 times positive 3x is positive 15x, positive 5 times positive 2 is positive 10. We have no like terms. We cannot simplify any further. 15x plus 10. Here we have negative two 
times the quantity y plus 0.3z minus 1. We're going to distribute the negative 2. We're going to multiply negative 2 times each of these terms. Negative 2 times positive y is negative 2y. Negative 2 times positive 0.3z is positive point, sorry, not positive. Negative times positive is negative. See how easy it is to screw that up. Negative 2 times positive 0.3z is negative. Negative times positive is negative 0.6z. And then negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. Negative times negative is positive. We have no like terms. We cannot combine any further. Here we have a minus right up against the parentheses, so we're taking the opposite of the quantity 9x plus y minus 2z plus 6. Distributing that negative is going to change all of the signs. So negative 9x minus y plus 2z minus 6. No like terms. Nothing we can do to combine further. Give this one a try. We've done something similar to this in the past where the distribution doesn't go through the whole thing. It stops when the parentheses stops. So go ahead and try this. Simplify completely when you're done. Go ahead and pause if you're not done. I'm going to give away the answer now. We distribute the three through the parentheses and only through the parentheses. Three times 2x is 6x. Positive 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. Then we have this plus 1. We can combine these like terms. Can't do anything with the 6x. But negative 15 plus 1 is negative 14. So 6x minus 14 once all is simplified. Here we have two sets of parentheses that we need to eliminate. We're going to distribute the negative 2 to each of these terms. We're going to distribute the negative to each of these terms. Negative 2 times positive 4x is negative 8x. Negative 2 times positive 7 is negative 14. We're done with the negative 2 now. Now we're distributing this negative, which is going to take the opposite of each term. The opposite of 3x is negative 3x. 
the opposite of negative one is positive one. Or if you want to think of that as negative one times three X, negative one times negative one. We do have like terms. Negative 8x minus 3x. Negative 8 of them minus 3 more is negative 11x. And then negative 14 plus 1 is negative 13. Negative 11x minus 13 would be the answer. One more. Nine plus three times the quantity four X minus 10. We're distributing the three. That's a positive three. Not doing anything with the nine, we just carry that forward. Positive three times positive four X. That's positive 12 X. Positive three times negative 10. It's negative 30. Nine minus 30, take the sign in front, not the sign after. Nine minus 30 is negative 21. And then we have plus 12x left over. That's not the only way this could be written. If you took your plus 12x first, 9 minus 30 gives you minus 21 after. So either of these is okay. And it makes sense because by the commutative property of addition, we can add in any order. So this answer is the same as 12x plus negative 21. Adding a negative is just subtraction. So we can see how we can get from one to the other here. Here's another one of those subtract blank from blank problems. We're subtracting 4x minus 2 from 2x minus 3. Remember, the order changes. If we're subtracting from 2x minus 3, that means we're starting with 2x minus 3. And we are subtracting from that the entire in parentheses, 4x minus 2. Now, we don't necessarily need these parentheses. That's the same as before when we just have a plus sign, a positive parentheses. So we could drop that. That's like distributing a positive 1 through. But here, we can't just drop the parentheses. It's the same as distributing the negative minus 4x plus 2. Signs change. 2x minus 4x is negative 2x. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. 
negative 2x minus 1 would be the answer here. We'll finish off with one for you to try. Subtract 7x minus 1 from 2x plus 3. Go ahead and pause and try this one. I'm going to give away the answer. I'm subtracting from 2x plus 3, the 7x minus 1. I didn't bother putting the parentheses around the 2x plus 3, but if you can, first step would be dropping those parentheses. Now we distribute the negative. We have 2x plus 3 minus 7x plus 1. 2x minus 7x is negative 5x, 2 minus 7 of them. And then positive 3 plus 1 gives us plus 4. Negative 5x plus 4. That's it for today.